We've seen reports of a video that purports to be the murder of U.S. citizen Stephen Sotloff by ISIL. The Islamic State terrorist group makes good on its promise, beheading American journalist Stephen Sotloff. And Ukraine forces try to protect another city threatened by pro-Russian rebels. Live from Washington, this is CCTV News. Hello, everyone, and welcome to CCTV America. I'm Asiye Namdar. A second American has reportedly been brutally murdered at the hands of the Islamic State. The militant group released video on Tuesday of the apparent beheading of American journalist Stephen Sotloff. The murder comes two weeks after IS that had killed American journalist James Foley. Jim Spellman joins me with the latest developments. Jim, a lot of questions to ask you. Number one, do we know if this video is authentic? Uh, the U.S. State Department, American authorities, British authorities, all working to try to confirm not only the authenticity of the video, but uh, things that can place it in time. Was it uh, shot recently? Were parts of it potentially voiced over. And you watched this video, so tell us I have, your observation. I, I know it's, it's gruesome. It's very disturbing. It looks very similar to the uh, setup of the James Foley execution video from two weeks or so ago. Uh, we see uh, Mr. Sotloff and we see this hooded executioner. He's wearing a, a mask. All you can see are his eyes, which is significant because you can't see his mouth move. So it's unclear if the voice you hear coming from him is him or not. What about the accent? Well, let me get to that. Okay. First of all, we see this video that we're seeing now of Mr. Sotloff uh, on the ground, very reminiscent of, of the other thing. He says what it sounds, you know, like it's probably a, a, a speech of some sort that has been worked out. After he says this thing, he speaks directly to Obama. He talks about American foreign policy. And then we see the executioner in a wider shot where he makes a speech directly to Barack Obama. Now, as I mentioned, you can't see his mouth. He's covered. He's speaking in English in what sounds vaguely like a British accent. Very difficult. We've had, uh, I've had British people listen to it. I've had uh, people from the Middle East listen to it. And it's hard to tell exactly where this voice is uh, from. He says directly to President Barack Obama, I'm back. And he references US airstrikes in several places, including the city of Amerli. Those attacks happened just Saturday. It's impossible since you can't see his mouth, to tell if he is shooting this live, perhaps it was overdubbed. These are all questions for the experts. We're not going to be able to answer these just by looking at them. But they're certainly the questions uh, that come up when you, when you watch this video. And then finally, remember when Mr. Foley was executed a couple of weeks ago, they said if these airstrikes don't stop, Mr. Sotloff will be next. They made good on that threat. Now they've added a third, a British journalist named David Haynes. And finally, in the video, the last thing you see is Mr. Haynes, this British journalist, same orange jumpsuit in the same location with his name written out. They threaten that uh, he will be next unless the, uh, the bombing stops. His last message for U.S. President Barack Obama, back off. The whole thing is so disturbing, Jim. Thank you. Thank you so much. This latest news of beheading comes as international rights organizations accuse IS of ethnic cleansing. Amnesty International says the group has systematically targeted ethnic and religious minorities like the Yazidis with the intent of wiping them out. The Islamic State group has managed to do what no others have uh, managed before. Um, minorities in Iraq have been uh, targeted uh, at different points in the past. Uh, but the Islamic State has managed in the space of a few weeks to completely wipe off the map of Iraq um, the uh, religious and ethnic minorities uh, from the areas under their control. Amnesty says IS has already captured and possibly killed hundreds, if not thousands, of Yazidi men and boys. Government troops, along with, along with Shiite and Kurdish militias, have regained control of three towns in northern Iraq. The towns were earlier taken by Islamic State fighters. Roads and buildings had to be cleared of explosives left behind by the militants. Soldiers also reported finding weapons and ammunition. These advances come after the Iraqi government made major breakthrough with a early operation earlier this week. More than 100 relatives of missing Iraqi soldiers stormed the parliament in Baghdad Tuesday. They're demanding information about family members who've been captured by IS. Meanwhile, back-to-back -back car bombings in Baghdad killed 18 people. 
50 others were wounded. The first bomb exploded in a commercial district in the capital. Moments later, another car bomb went off near a popular cafe. Now, amid terrorist threats and intense fighting, one Iraqi couple is fighting back with a wedding that crosses ethnic lines. Guests celebrated as a Shiite Muslim groom married his Sunni Muslim bride in a wedding hall decorated with colorful ornaments and music. Invited guests enjoyed a traditional wedding banquet. The newlyweds fled to Baghdad from their hometown of Mosul to avoid the violence of the Islamic State militants.